Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny. Thanks for joining me today on my Facebook Live broadcast. I have lots of fun things today, some new stuff and some show and tells. So I'd like to get started as people are joining in and share some happy mail. So I wanted to share that Nate made this little pretty flower and you can see that it's his hand print. Isn't that sweet? It's made out of fun foam. And it says, like a flower you love and watch me grow. Thanks for everything you do. I'm glad my mom is the extra special you. Isn't that cute? And they got him to write his name. And it probably took a lot of work to get that name because he's in pre-K and he has really bad OT skills. So I love this. Isn't that cute? That is the sweetest. So I have loads of happy mail. Last week I was not able to share my happy mail and um, so I'm making up for it this week. So we've got two weeks worth of happy mail. And this is a Mother's Day card that I got from my friend Robin. Isn't it pretty? Look at the background. It's gorgeous. She's made this on glossy white paper and it is like the coolest. It's so cool. So this is the Amazing You die cut and it's in two colors, stacked and staggered. This is vellum, it looks like. And there's a beautiful message inside. Thank you, Robin, that was a beautiful card. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Now here's a card that came all the way from New Zealand from Emma Schuen. And have a look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? I can see the oh so eclectic um, suite of products all over the place on this. And she's used them beautifully. Look at how she's offset the flower here. I love it. Hi, Je how, 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 hi Kathy. I'm glad you could join me. Um, I'm just showing some happy mail to start off with. And in case you missed it um, so far, I showed this cute little, it's got a magnet on the back and Nate made this in pre-K at his school and um, it has lots of uh, fun foam things to it. So this is something to add to my keepsakes. So sweet. The teachers at the pre-K are the best. Hands down, the best. But this is um, a lot of uh, the products from the Oh So Eclectic bundle or the oh so eclectic suite and the naturally eclectic paper lemon lime twist and looks like we've got some berry burst um this bundle is about to expire so if you like this bundle of products then you want 10 percent off you better grab it hi sharon you are probably getting ready for bed aren't you well i'm glad you took the time to stop in and say hello so this card came from new zealand and my next card is from California, from my friend Maria. And have a look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely stunning. And I believe this stamp set is about to retire too. It's from the Occasions catalog. I can't put my finger on the name of it, but um, the Tutti Fruity card bases were from Celebration and it's just stunning. Beautiful work. Maria does gorgeous work, especially watercoloring. And she put a little note on the back too. Isn't that awesome? I love it. I have lots of happy mail today. So we're gonna get to a card pretty soon, but I wanted to share all the wonderful things first. Hey, Joanne. So this, this is some retired designer series paper and we've even got an enamel dot over here. Isn't this so nice? This is from um, my friend, Marie and there's a beautiful note inside and she even has her name on the back a little um, Vanderbeck card company because you know that's that's her and it's amazing and she's amazing she's one of the sweetest ladies thank you so much Marie I absolutely love this card I love the colors and look at how she made the flag banner on it it's just wonderful 
So my next card is from my friend Marcy and she lives in Canada. She may be watching. Sometimes I know she gets to. Hi Anne Marie. Thanks for joining. Um, this is made with the um, the picnic basket bundle and it's the coolest. And I like the way that Marcy has featured some of the items on here that are not typical. It's not the little food. This is this is one that I think she made on her Facebook Live. And um, everything is die cuts. They're stamped and die cut. And there's a wonderful, beautiful message inside. And it's just so nice, soft, lovely. I, I want to frame this one. It's gorgeous. Thank you, Marcy. You are the coolest. Speaking of Marcy, I have two more cards. Um, but first, I want to get to one made by my friend Betty. And um, my son's birthday is this coming Saturday. Um, Nathaniel's is. Hi, Monica. Um, Nathaniel's birthday is, he's going to be five, and it's on Saturday. And so um, several of my friends have sent some cards for Nate for his birthday and um, and for trip too, just because, you know, one car for one kid, got to do two. <laughs> but this was really sweet of Buddy. So she's got this wonderful little character here, and she's given him dark skin, which is wonderful because my son has dark skin. And he um, can look at it and he can see that um, it's made for him. And we've got some beautiful little die cuts. And here's the hidden surprise. It flips back open over here. And Betty's included a couple of little die cut animals because my sons like to play with these little characters. They're so much fun. Thanks for sharing the video, Anne Marie. I appreciate it. And then we've got lots and lots of fussy cutting over here and a and gold embossed sunshine. This just, this is a super duper card. Nate will love it, Betty. Thank you so much. And she always does envelope art too. That's one thing about Betty's cards. I can always see the envelope art. So I've got two cards here. These are the last of the Happy Mails. And um, they're from Marcy, my friend in Canada. And she made one card for each kid. And have a look here. This is from the Magical Day Bundle. And she's used some of the boxwood wreaths and look at that. Isn't it amazing? These are both slider cards. And we've got dragons on each and little knights on each. This is like, they're so cool. Interactive cards are the best. And then there's a beautiful little note inside for each boy. My sons love getting mail. And they love getting mail that's for them too. <laughs> so, uh, you know how kids are. Oh, thank you, Marcy. The they're, the kids are going to love these. I just opened them up today, in fact. I got them like well over a week ago, but I, I saved them to be able to open them up today. So that's it for the Happy Mail. So I would like to share, um, all week long, I'm creating projects from the Animal Outing um, stamp set. So the, this is a card that I had on my blog. I think it was yesterday. Um, I think so. <laughs> and it's a double Z fold card. And it has a box area where you can put little, little things too. And this is the card that I featured today. And this card was so much fun. I absolutely loved it. Um, this is made with, and I even got the dies out. Sometimes I look at my dies and I think, what can I do with a die that's not meant to go with a stamp set, but it has a nice die all the same. So as this thing falls apart, I'm going to get to the die I used. This is the die that I used. So now you can see the similarity, right? And all of these items... They, fe they feature right on there. So I had a question um, from a stamper that was ab questioning me about this stamp set, about animal outing. And I've put it somewhere in a safe place. 
Here it is. <laughs> um, so Animal Outing is in the new catalog and it's going to be a lot of fun. There are some framelits that go with it, but the framelits are not yet available. So just because we've got the stamp set, um, we don't have the framelits yet. And I've got the same thing going on for another one that I will, um, I will share on the project we're gonna to create today from scratch. Thanks, Amber. I'm glad you liked this card. This was a really fun card for me to make. Um, I've used the, I think it's the Petal Passion. It goes with the, um, it goes with the Petal Palette theme, um, the Petal Palette Suite. There's a, a set of embossing folders that go with this. Um, it was two of those small embossing folders, and that's how I got this textured portion here. And these are the layering square, I'm sorry, layering uh, circles, framelits. And I did a partial die cut to get the top of this. I followed a tutorial from uh, Bronwyn Eastley from Addinctive Designs. I'm on her Addinctive Designs team. And so we take her designs and adapt them for our own card making use. And this is one that I absolutely love this fold, this double Z fold. And um, the tutorial that Bronwyn, Bronwyn used has lots of labels die as well. As we know, lots of labels is being retired. And so this is my, um, this, this is my attempt at making something that is similar and doing a partial die cut. And if you're interested in the tutorial, then go over to addinctivedesigns.com. That's A-D-D-I-N-K-T-I-V-E designs.com. And click on shop and or tutorials shop. And then you can find the, the lots of labels, double Z fold cards. Uh, Bronwyn's tutorials are very, very reasonably priced. And you can adapt them just like I did. So um, the tutorial was not written to use these circles, but I used them because the lots of labels is being retired. But I want to show you this because of Animal Outing. So I did a watercolor of this little pretty sleeping kangaroo. It looks like a mommy kangaroo to me with a koala in her pouch. And um. I've done another card that features the rhinoceros that will be on my blog and my YouTube channel tomorrow. So um, if you want to look out on my YouTube channel tomorrow, then you'll get to see a full watercoloring of this little guy right here. I'm not going to show you the card because it comes out tomorrow. So this is a really fun fold and look at the little froggy too. So sweet. So this card is on my blog today, and I'm using this giraffe, and then of course I can't stop using the frog, because the frog is just the funnest part of the whole project. <laughs> I love the frog. So um, how I made this card was I started with those, those dies from Eastern Medallions, and I measured to see what size it was going to be, because I wanted to make a framed design, but I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted it to look. So I looked through my thin list dies and this is a very interesting shape and I knew it would be striking. Now I wanted to do a frame design because I had a question from Kathy C and she said that this is just a giraffe head. What do we do with just a, a, a half of a giraffe? So this is this is my solution is to feature it in a frame design. And so each one of these items are framed and the sentiment fit in there very well. Um, this is Stamp and Blends alcohol markers. Hi, Joanne. Um, we have a couple of Joannes in, the, in the, the live stream today. So I used linen thread to go over here and wrap around twice and it lends a nice little bow. And this is the Share What You Love Designer Series paper. Um, and it cuts out and lends just a nice little hint of color, uh, a nice, fun, whimsical card. Let's see the inside. I stamped a giraffe. So this one is on my blog today. You can see this today. 
and get more details about it. You will go to JennyStampsUp.com and it'll be the, the post that you can see. And you can check that out today. Tomorrow I have more animal adding. Um, there's lots of animal adding this week so that as we get um, prepared for the new catalog, then I'm sharing things with a common theme all week long. So let's check out what we can do with animal outing. But first, I want to talk about, and this is because of the card that, that we're gonna make, I'm gonna do a watercolor rainbow, which I've had many questions about. Um, so what I want to share with you all is that I have a color club that's going to be starting up um, the 1st of June. So in the middle of June, each month, then we will have a shipment go out that contains one new ink pad in this new design, one ink refill that is in the new formula to go with this, and one pack of new cardstock. And the cost of it is just what you would normally pay. There's no additional, um, there's no additional charges put on top of it. But I wanted to take a moment and share exactly how the club works. So since there are 16 of these new colors that are joining our color family, and then some colors went away, then I needed to come up with a way to help my customers um, and my team members to be able to build up the new card stock, the new stamp pads, the new ink refill without laying out all the cost up front because it can be quite costly. That would be 16 packs of cardstock, 16 ink refills, and 16 stamp pads. And it's much more cost effective to do it uh, one month at a time. Yes, Anne Marie, you can case my cards. I would appreciate it if you would give me credit though. If you would just say I was inspired by Jenny Hall to make whatever it is you're making, then um, feel free to case away. And if you have any questions, I think you've got my email addressed, Anne Marie. You can um, send me an email. So in the color club, um, once a month, starting in June, then you will receive whatever that month's featured stamp pad, ink refill, and matching card stock are. It's going to be the catalog price. And what the benefit is, is that I am going to give you back rewards for participating in the club. So as you participate in the club, these are some of the details, and I'm showing this in writing because I've got all this on my blog. Then if you go to my blog, then you can, you can view all the details in writing. So you sign up um, before May 31st if you want to start in June. And at the end of six months, then I will gift you um, any pack of Stampin' Write markers of your choice. And so the stamp and write markers are the ones, I'll grab one real quick here. The markers are in individual packs of each color family. And that's something that you also need to replace unless you have this big giant, um, many marvelous markers. Well, a lot of these colors are going away and so we have to replace them. So as my gift to you for participating in the color club, then at the end of the first six months, then I will gift you the full set of 10 markers in the new ink formula of the stamp and write markers. And you can choose which one you wanna get, brights, subtles, regals, it's up to you. So that's my way of giving back. So basically, you get to also get and earn the markers, and the markers are not gonna cost you anything at all. I order them, I send them to you, and then at the end of the second six months, good morning, Betty. At the end of the second six months, I'm going to gift you another pack. So that would be 12 months of participating in the club. Then I'll gift you another pack of your choice. You get to choose what it is. And then at the end of the 16th month, so that's four months after the one year period ends, then I'll send you, after you've completed the whole club, the whole full 16 months, I will send you an amazing gift that's gonna be a complete surprise and I'm not gonna tell you what it is. 
<laughs> but this is something that is really fun. Now also along the way, I'm going to be um, doing tutorials and yes, you will, if you participate in my club every single month, you will be getting little surprise things along the way. Usually that's gonna be in the form of an exclusive tutorial or an exclusive video tutorial online classes, it could be products, dropping something in the mail, lots of thank you cards. Um, there's, It's going to be a lot of fun. If you are a demonstrator and you want to place an order with me, I know that you can order everything you're on your own. And I have had a question from another demonstrator that said that they wanted to participate and just place an order as a customer. I, as far as I know, you can do that, and um, good morning, Betty, and I don't see any reason why you can't. Um, however, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like to choose a me as your demonstrator, this is a perfect opportunity to build up your ink collection, your cardstock collection, and your ink refill collection all at a slow pace that's very affordable. I added up the cost of the stamp pad plus the ink refill, plus the, the cardstock pack, and it comes to just below $20 per month, and that does not include applicable tax and shipping charges. Um, I think $19.75 is what it comes up to for any stamp pad and ink refill and a cardstock pack. And so that's what the monthly cost is gonna be, plus the tax and the shipping. So if you have any questions or you would like to participate, then you can go to my website and on the sidebar there is a um, there's a thumbnail that looks kind of like this. It'll say Color Club. So you can click on Color Club or if you have any questions you can always email me. I'm always available. But um, you sign up for the Color Club by clicking a button. It'll say Sign Up Now and then you fill in I'll show you exactly what it looks like so you know what to expect. Then you, you fill in your email, your name, your address, all the information for your address. Your country needs to be United States. I'm sorry, but this is not available outside of the U.S., only to U.S. residents. And your phone number. What I don't want you to put anywhere is your credit card information. Once you sign up, and here's the little button, sign me up. Once you sign up for Color Club, then I will contact you to get your credit card information over the telephone. I don't want you to write it down anywhere. Um, you know, our day nowadays with cyber hacks and all the other, I would just rather you know do this part um, verbally over the phone, and I'll write it down in my records. So if you have any questions about the 16 new colors, and they're gorgeous. We've had we took a real good look at them last week as I opened them up. Then um, if you have a question, I am here to answer it. So the reason that I talked about the color club before I start is because we're going to color today with one color family on um, a rainbow. We're going to create a watercolor rainbow, and the colors that we're going to use are picked off of this list. Now this this little um, this little thing here this is like a color guide. I have created this for my customers that are going to receive a catalog from me, and my team members are going to get one. And um, yes, you're right, Sharon. The, um, I thought about that too with the with the little kangaroos and all the different little animals. Um, that's immediately what I thought of. Um, but this little I call it a color revamp guide. And I created this for my team and for uh, my customers. And it's going out with the catalogs. And this week is catalog mailing. So if you need a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you don't have one, then you can contact me and I'll make sure you get one of these in with all the other goodies that go in with my catalogs. Um, sending out catalogs is a really big deal for me as it is for a lot of online demonstrators. And um, we like to uh, include lots of extra special things. So with the brights, let me go back over here to the brights. One reason that this is particularly useful is that you can look 
at what's in a color family and you can do a side by side comparison if you want to if you want to say you know see if something matches so we're going to stick with the brights today and I know that if you're a customer you don't have all of these colors yet but it will be beneficial to you to build up these colors by um, joining color club so we're going to use poppy parade and they're all listed here Mango Melody, Daffodil Delight, see these are all off of this list, Granny Apple Green, Pacific Point, and Gorgeous Grape. These are like the ideal rainbow colors in my book. I love, absolutely love these colors. Um, the only drawback is that I don't have my ink refills yet. Um, they're coming in my pre-order, but I live in New Jersey, and I think we are at the very end of the line for UPS. So it takes almost two weeks for me to get my order, uh, my pre-orders from Stampin' Up! to come all the way from Utah. So we're going to do um, a little bit of smushing onto a, a non-porous surface so that we can use the um, stamp pad for our, um, for our ink rainbow. So we're going to get started with that now. I'm glad you like it, Joanne. So if you guys have any questions along the way, then please feel free. And if you're just joining, then also I want to say hi. Please pop in, say hi. I'm also going to be using Pick a Pennant stamp set, which I used yesterday in a, on my YouTube channel and we're going to use it in a different way today. And I'm not gonna spoil the surprise, but I think you'll like it. So I'm going to use a piece of watercolor paper because this is going to be a watercolor rainbow, then um, we need to have the right type of paper. And Marie, I understand your pain, and it is agony waiting for those new products sometimes. It is, um, it, it's a it's a good kind of agony though because you know that when you get your goods in that it's going to be wonderful. So I'm going to start off with this watercolor paper by putting some embossing, and I'm going to use the giraffe image today, and I'll use a um, sentiment that says, let's see if I can read this backwards. Thank you big time. And I like that. Thank you, big time. Okay, so I'm going to treat this paper with my embossing buddy. And the first thing I'm going to stamp is the sentiment because I want the giraffes to be out of the way of the sentiment. Make sure I center all of this there. It's probably crooked because, as you know, I'm a crooked stamper. But that's okay. It all comes out in the end. All right, so there's one piece. And now I'm going to start adding the giraffes. And because I've got a rainbow look that I'm going to go from left to right, I thought it would be okay if I put the giraffes anywhere, any, in, in any kind of a, of a wonky fashion. So I'm going to have one here close to the sentiment and add a little powder. Sometimes I do this so that I can really see exactly where I'm putting all of my little images. I'm gonna have one coming up from a different direction. And it looks like I've got a little stray powder. There, that took it off. Okay, and we'll have another one coming up over from here. Now this is, looks like a sleepy giraffe. I'm not really sure if I could draw the eyes on to get it to have an open, open-eyed look. I thought about that. Okay, so we've got several giraffes happening. Kathy, you are liking the pick a pennant? I do too. Um, I can't wait for the framelits to come out. I know that they've all 
all of the images, or most of the images on Pick a Pennant have got some matching framelits, and um, it's gonna be really fun doing that. And we're gonna kinda do something that's in that vein, kind of, but I don't wanna spoil the surprise for you yet. All right, so I did warm up my heat gun, my heat tool, but I want to make sure that I warm it really well before I bring it over to the paper because that way my paper is going to stay as flat as possible. So I make sure that my heat gun is really, really nice and warm. And then to save my fingers from being burned, I'm gonna use my paper piercing tool. And just kind of keep moving that heat gun around. And my paper is already starting to lift up a little bit. I don't want it to, but it's going to. And this is gold embossing powder. Okay. So by me adding my sentiment right now, I don't have to worry about adding one later because the watercolor is gonna resist over the embossing. Aha, so that was my thought. Now my paper's warped from the heat. Let's see if I can flip it over. There we go. That'll be a little better. Okay, so now let's start some watercoloring. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free. And if you're just joining in, be sure to say hi. And if you'd like to share where you're from, then that would be nice too. This is where you can use a paper towel or a tissue, um, or you can use the paper already that you have. I'm gonna use a um, just a piece of scratch paper here to remove some of the color from my water brush, my aqua painter. So I'm gonna start off by wetting the whole thing with tap water, all of it. And I'm gonna give it a nice good coat. Okay, and you can see that it's already starting to bow up and react a little bit. And that's okay, we're gonna do the coloring pretty fast. So now I'm going to do the smushing directly here on this block and start off with poppy. Just add some here, enough for me to be able to get the color onto the paper. Now once I get my ink refills in the mail, in the UPS, then I will be able to put some drips on the inside of my stamp pad and that's the way I really like to operate. Putting them on um, the clear block is okay. It's not wrong, but it's not what I like to do. So now Mango Melody is the next one on the list. Hi, Pam. So Mango Melody is a really fun orange color. It's really summery. And this could be one of the first times I've used it because it does not want to close. All right, I'm gonna save that one for later. And I'm gonna add this orange. And then if I want to squeeze that barrel, it's going to help these colors really run into each other. Next is yellow. And I've already got some in the lid here, so I can pick up some of the yellow. And you can see the orange just fades into yellow. Now this could be, like this is almost like sunset colors so far, and I could see that being a really fun combination. So what are your favorite colors for a rainbow? you have a color collection that you like? I'm gonna grab a tissue here to, to really get that yellow off before I start with my green. 
The Regals and the Brights are both kind of uh, fun colors together, but today is all about the Brights. Hi, Kay. So Granny Apple Green is one of the colors I'm really having a lot of fun with. And I'm gonna make sure that the green kind of works its way over because that's my, I only have two colors to go after that. So I'm gonna make sure that I have lots of space and add more, I'll probably add more yellow after a bit. It's gonna bleed a little bit, which is what I'm looking for, is that nice blend. And then here come the really bold colors. I love Pacific Point. Uh, you're right, Joanne, that green, this green is gorgeous. And because we embossed our sentiment, then we don't have to worry about adding it over anything. And the Pacific Point can really, really be a very bright color. But the next one is the one that I'm thinking about. Gorgeous Grape. Gorgeous Grape is just a super color. Been waiting for some purples to come along. And now we have a few gorgeous purples to choose from. Betty, you have a good point about the subtles in a rainbow. I think we'll have to try that out. Okay, I'm squeezing the barrel of the brush as I apply this color because I want the bleed to go all the way into the blue. And then I'll dab it off and now I'll just add some, some just water from my water brush to get that bleed to go and it's all blending in. But because I'm being careful with the water, it's not oversaturating my paper to where I can't manage it. Okay, so let's blend a little bit of this green and blue. And then by dabbing off my color, I'm able to just add water to get that blue to transition into the green without bringing too much of the color over. I'm just letting the color travel on the water. And those drafts are just so cute. Hi, Jackie. I'm happy to see you. Now, when I go back over to the part of the water of the watercolor paper that is starting to dry, I need to make sure that I squeeze that barrel so that I can get the transition from red into the Mango Melody. And we're coloring with just these colors today. And this is one of the reasons why I thought it was important for me to mention my color club, because when you use all the colors that are in one color family, and this is Daffodil Delight again, um, in a color collection, <clears throat> when you have gaps in between, then you're not going to get the color coordination that you might perhaps be looking for. I'll bring a little bit more of the green up here to the top. And then we have our rainbow forming. This color is washing out just a little bit over here. So I can reactivate that red. And then still keep it fun. I like how it's, uh, it has lighter color there in the middle. That's a little bit of interest. So this guy is colored. I'd like a little bit more transition between the blue and the purple. But can you see how all of these bright colors work together? And that's one important reason why um, Stampin' Up! did the color revamp was to more appropriately show that the brights are now really bright, that they moved around some colors and Things are really, really, really nice with the colors. I'm very excited. 
All right, so we're gonna transition this blue a little more into the purple while still making it look natural. And there we go. And on the back side, the color hasn't saturated, so the paper is still holding on to the color really easily. Hi, Carolyn. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this for just a bit, and this is my heat tool on low, and I'm going to just move it around until I see that the paper is starting to dry up. I don't want it to over dry, because then the paper will start bending itself up. And if I turn it around and get both sides of the paper with the heat tool, then I can prevent a lot of that warping look. But there is a great deal amount of fluid in the paper, so it's gonna take just a little bit to get it dry. Thanks, Carolyn. These are the brights that we're working with today. We're just making a rainbow with brights, bright colors. Now I can set this aside and use it for another project. Um, spritz it with water and add it to a card. There's lots of things that I can do to not waste this color that's on a block. I'm just gonna set it aside for now. I'll probably clean it up and maybe use it a little later for coloring. So let's add this to a card. This is where I want to share the idea that I have for the Pick a Pennant. So Pick a Pennant has these beautiful, wonderful little pennants that are slightly curved. However, I've, I've attached this to the block at a straight angle because I would like to make a scallop to go underneath my watercolor image. So that's going to kind of feature like a, you know, like how you just have like a lace trim on things. It's gonna be a really easy look that can be achieved. I don't have the framelits yet for this stamp set, so I'm going to fussy cut. So Pick a Pennant is another stamp set that's really cool. And I'm gonna use a fun color. Here's Blackberry Bliss, which is a returning color. This is gonna be one of the 16 that are in my color club. So I'm going to use a lighter shade of Blackberry Bliss by stamping it off and using a second generation of ink. Okay, so I'm, I'm adding all of this beautiful Blackberry color but I want just a lighter shade because see how dark that is? It almost reads as a um, as black, almost. And if I stamp off, I can get a really pretty color. So, and it's got a little bit of texture to it too. And that's the fun color that I was thinking of. Carolyn, we were talking earlier um, <laughs> about the pain the, the the sweet agony of waiting for all of these new colors. It is definitely painful, but it's rejoicing whenever we get them in. <laughs> so here's the stamp chamois, and I want to talk about um, that I mentioned in our last Facebook Live about I was concerned that storing the stamp chamois is going to cause it to be stinky or mildewy. And I can now share that I have left it wet. I have done it, dried it. I did a, um, I did a test and it is, it does, there's no stinking. There's, there's all good smells coming off of this guy. So it must have some kind of built-in resistance to accumulating mold. But look at how it takes the color off. And this is just an empty uh, clear mount stamp case. And that stamp may be stained a little bit from the Blackberry Bliss, but it's clean. It will stamp off clean. Have a look. See, the stamp is clean. So the stamp, the Simply Chamois works wonderfully. You can, you can feel confident 
that's why I gave a little bit of a, I wouldn't say a warning, but um, a kind of a wait and see exactly how it turned out. And this chamois works wonderful. And you could, like I, like I did, just pick it up and clean. It stays damp. Um, I take it every day over to my sink and run uh, just warm tap water and squeeze it. And some of the ink comes out. I haven't used any soap on it at all. I'm afraid that um, I shouldn't use any any soap. And I don't see that it, I need to use any soap. So I make sure that it's um, closed in my case and it's fine. So I can officially recommend the Simple Chamois. It works great. So to save time, I know you don't want to watch me do fuss cut, fussy cutting, although we do all love fussy cutting. I have already gone and stamped and fussy cut one of the pennants that we'll be using today. So this is the size and I'm not going to even need this much of it. But before I attach it to the card, I am going to add tons of Wink of Stella to it because I want this to really, really show off. The one thing to think about when you're using Wink of Stella is that there's always the chance that you can get the color to run and bleed as it, see how it's doing here? So be careful when you use it on something that's already colored in instead of just cardstock. Oops, I dropped a little piece of it there. Get that off and add lots of shimmer and shine. My kids love shimmer and shine. It's a pair of genies on the cartoon on TV that my children love. <laughs> it is a good one. It, it's a good one to have, Donna. Um, it's a it's a wonderful addition, and just for the scallop. And now there is a die um, that's going to be in with. Hi, Aaliyah. There is a die that's going to be in with the die set that matches Pick a Pennant that will only cut the bottom portion away. And think about if you can take a portion, like imagine this, you cut it to size and you just have a little scallop or you have the, the, the pointed pennant. And that's going to be just the cutest the cutest on some cards. So um, especially on uh, like paper craft 3D projects, we will get those dies in and we'll explore all the possibilities. But for now, we're gonna stick with just fussy cutting it by hand. And we're, now I know Blackberry Bliss is not in the brights section, but I wanted there to be a companion color that would complement the rainbow colors that we've just created, but wouldn't wouldn't take away from them. So that's why the lighter shade of Blackberry Bliss was my choice. So I'm going to attach with snail adhesive. And this is regular Wisp the White cardstock. And this is, if you follow my project, you see this kind of combination a lot. The larger piece is cut to four by five and a quarter inches, and then I reduce the inner piece by one eighth of an inch. So that would be three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, I think. <laughs> if I write it down, I can definitely see it in my mind a lot better. But this is going to be featured, um, this is now my card front. And I'll attach this with some dimensionals. Make sure that they're pushed in to the paper and then that backing comes off really easy. Just like with the tear and tape, if the adhesive actually activates onto the paper, then you're able to remove the backing very easily. All right, now we're, our project is starting to really shape up. So our paper panel is nice and dry now. It's looking good. And I'm going to trim this piece just enough to where it is going to center. 
So I think the best way to do that is going to be to adhere it directly down to the watercolor paper. We're gonna try snail. Watercolor paper and snail don't always work together well, but let's try it and see how it goes. I want to have my panel come down over these little join marks where the stamp ends and the white paper starts. So by centering it here and bringing it down just enough, I'm going to make it look like it's a scallop instead of a pennant. Trying to get it even. I think that's good. So now it can be trimmed off. Just a straight trim. I don't have to worry about rounding it. And that's good. So we were able to create our own rainbow with the, um, the brights. And look at how they just jump off the page. So now I feel like this card needs just a little something else. When I was in the planning design stage, I thought I can do a little bit something else that's not going to distract from the beautiful rainbow colors, but would help to, um, that would help to complement. Hi, Nicole, Nicola, I'm sorry, Nicola, <laughs> if I'm pronouncing your name properly. So I have some more new product that I feel will help us to um, be able to accomplish that. Now, um, a lot of times in my design, I use white die cuts as accents that give texture, but they don't take away from the colors that I'm trying to feature. So I'm going to do some uh, a few white cut, die cuts, and I would like to do that with this beautiful brand new package of designer series paper that is all laser cut. I suggest that if you use this, or if you, if you even if you have or have not gotten it, it has two pieces of cardboard, one on the front and one on the back, and I feel that it's for good reason, because I will definitely rip this paper going in and out of the sleeve, so I'm not gonna try to plan to bring anything out of this paper pack, like no sliding out, I'll slide out the entire unit from my sleeve of plastic and then open it up and find exactly what I'm looking for. Now one side of the paper is vanilla and the other side is white. And there's so many different things that we can do with this. We're just gonna use it in one way today. But I wanted to share another project that I started earlier I have one of the little panels, and I'll find it here. And I'm gonna switch to the other side by, I might be being a little overprotective, but I really feel like I'm going to tear these sheets if I'm not careful enough. So I cut away one of these pieces here. You can see that it's missing, and it looks like that. And I took my, my, um, Versamark ink pad, applied it straight down on a piece of scratch paper, and then I sprinkled gold embossing powder. It took a lot of sprinkles in order to get all the embossing since there is a, um, since there is a, a hole in between all these. But I embossed it, and so now I have a golden lattice look. That'll appear on another project that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. But I thought I would share that there's gonna be a lot of ways to use this paper. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> Carolyn, it, you just gotta kinda, you know, build your wish list and then you'll have to cut it down later. <laughs> but this is, this is a wonderful way that you can feature, um, you could even take your black stamp pad or your purple stamp pad and as long as you've got it on a piece of scratch paper on any of these die cuts. So um, Kathy is asking what is this paper pack and it's called Delightfully Detailed Laser Cut Specialty Paper and this is some new DSP that is coming in the catalog. It is on the pre-order. If you're a demonstrator, you can pre-order this 
If you want to be a demonstrator, then you can add this to your starter kit right now, which is a perfect way for you to be able to build up your craft supplies. So there's tissue paper in between all of the sheets. And we're gonna flip over to the back side in just a second, and I'll show you what the other side looks like. But see how easy it is to kind of get caught? I don't know if this part is off camera, but um, the pages are going to tend to get tangled up a little bit. But you know what, in all honesty, that's okay because this paper is so worth it. This is the one that I'm gonna be cutting some pieces off to feature with our rainbow card. So this has got a, let's have a look at it on the craft. This has got a full sheet that you can use it any way you like. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to snip away some of the pieces. I wanna to try to take it away from the middle and not the side, because I feel like if I take it away from the side, I'm going to corrupt the integrity of the frame that it's being held in. So I'm gonna just go in the middle here and I'm going to pick out a few pieces and snip them away. Nothing fancy. I like this uh, little leaf scene that I can take and strategically make a few cuts. And then I'll be able to feature it. Now, I guess the, the big question is, would it be faster to just make a die cut of something else? It could be, but this is new paper. So I'm sure that you guys really like to use your new products, but I don't have any dies that match these pretty, pretty units. Look at that. Let's have a look at it off of. So I can just use this. Check it out. <laughs> yes, Nicola, we all need um, a way to supplement. Now, and we've got the vanilla on one side and the white on the other. Now, you could color this gold, too, like I did on the other card. So just for um, balance, I'm going to take another because I know I'm going to want more than one spot to feature the, a little die cut area. So now I've got two. I'm going to put this back inside and I'm gonna lock it back up with the other piece and try to keep this uh, tissue paper right in between all of the pieces. Each piece has a piece of tissue paper in between. So if you're just joining then, um, I suggested that make sure that you keep both sides, because see it's on both sides of this cardboard, and then slip it in and out of your sleeve. Don't try to remove a piece um, that's from the paper pack that you might do. That's how I do it with the SP. I slide out the paper that I need, and um, definitely I'm not gonna be doing that on this. So let's get some dimensionals on this guy here and feature how we're gonna lay out our die cuts. And it looks like this is sticking very, very well to the watercolor paper, which is great. If you don't have luck with snail adhesive, then try tear and tape or fast fuse if you're a fast fuse fan. I am not a fan of Fast Fuse, and I'm not sorry to see it go, because Fast Fuse never worked right for me. But I have some friends who, they are very successful with it. <laughs> That's okay, Carolyn. Um, I'm happy to cut it. I'm happy to cut it up. Okay, we're gonna add this right around this area here. Uh, I'm gonna to try to center it before it actually touches and makes contact. And then here is where we can add just, just something different. I wanna add this up here to the top too, but I'm, hmm. 
For those of you that are horrified right now because I cut this in half, don't worry. We'll use it. It will get used. So we can feature one of these little flowers up the top. And this little piece is so pretty. Maybe we can separate some of this and have it hang down so that you don't see that cut side. Just do a little strategic placement and it won't look like it was cut away from a larger piece at all. It'll be just fine. There we go. So now there's a little bit of something extra that's distracting away from, there's a lot of white space. And I love white in my card projects, you guys know that. But sometimes we need to um, ground that white space just a little bit. So I'm gonna add some more of those little die cuts there. I'm not sure that I wanna add any more than this, just something coming out from the other direction. Maybe this small piece will do right. Let's clean it up just a little bit. And I will probably do some more cleaning up on it after the video is finished before I take my photographs. I'll make sure that I share this video on my YouTube channel so that you can catch up on YouTube if you missed any of it or you can catch up here on my Facebook page. And then this will be on my blog as a project on Friday. Let's see, trying to slide it in there without, there we go, <laughs> without making contact too early. And that's just a little extra something. I think I might find some of those little, those little seeds. I don't want to over, I'm already getting a little more than what I would normally prefer to have on the card. Um, I try to be more minimal than, than not. So let's see the inside of the card, what shall we put? And then the back of the card is where we can really add our statement of the heart. This is where that stamp set is gonna come in handy. Let's make it in gorgeous grape for the back of the card. So if you've gotten your hands on the Share What You Love bundles, then you might have this stamp set, but you won't be able to have this stamp set unless you order it now, because it's not gonna be in the catalog. This is the Statement of the Heart stamp set that is free whenever you purchase um, the, what, the Gotta Have It All bundle from Share What You Love Suite. And this is, I can see putting this on almost all of the back of all my cards. I'm in love with that stamp. Have a good day, Betty. I'm sorry. I know you have to, we have a big time difference between us. We have three hours in between us. All right, so let's go with another one of these beautiful little giraffes and make it purple since purple's open. A purple giraffe, why not? We've got a rainbow giraffe up on the front, so we'll keep that theme going of all this brilliant color. Now you can see that I'm using a scrap panel and that works out really fine and my glue is being held in an empty ribbon spool. The ribbon comes off and it's just the right just the right size for me to be able to hold up my liquid glue to where it always has the glue at the tip. And that's our card today. What do you think? I really want to hear what you guys think about it. Thanks Anne Marie. She likes it. 
I'm happy to make it. It's a pretty, I've been wanting to make a rainbow. There's something inside a lot of us that I feel like we just like, God, I've got to make a rainbow. <laughs> Especially if you're a paper crafter. Oh, thanks, Nicola. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, this is a lot of fun. So we see that that scallop, and it's got the wink of Stella on it. I don't know if you can see it in the light now. We've got the giraffes. So here's another re way. Um, Kathy C. had asked, what do I do with this giraffe set, this giraffe that's in the, in the set, and it's just a giraffe head. And um, I'll go back and show that these are the other, oops, uh, these are the other projects that I made that are on my blog this week from the Animal Outing stamp set. So if you have not yet made up your mind whether you like this stamp set or not, then I hope that the projects that I have shared this week will help you to be able to determine if you want to add it to your wish list. And this is the Animal Outing stamp set. And I'm loving this pretty little mama kangaroo with a with a koala. And I, I have to share something with you all. When I first saw this, I was drawn to the kangaroo. And I thought that it was sweet because it's like the koala is her baby. But the koala is not the same as a kangaroo. So that in my mind, I... I associated that she has adopted that you know that she has adopted the little baby koala and um, you know as you guys know if you follow my channel then you know that both of my children are adopted and adoption is a very big part of our life so um, that's what I thought of when I saw this is that you know we've got a family we've got a family right here and those birds have a name but I can't think of what it is Trip told me what the name of the bird is that lives on top of the rhino and they have a symbiotic relationship and um i can't think of what the name of it is <laughs> kind of crazy yes kathy these are some really great images and so um this one is a watercolored kangaroo and koala and then you know i've watercolored the little froggy and granny apple green really plays a big part in this um, something you might not be able to tell is that I stamped the kangaroo in pink. I stamped it in petal pink. And so um, I'm, I'm really, really digging petal pink for watercoloring because it's a good neutral color and it's a more earthy pink that is going to help um, bring out a warm look but with no lines left behind. I think it's going to be really great. Um, on my YouTube channel tomorrow is another card that is going to feature this rhinoceros because I'm doing all week um, animal outing. And I will watercolor this and I'll do a talk on the video where there is a difference between smoky slate and gray granite. And you can see it a little bit here that this is gray granite and this is smoky slate. Although it's harder to tell um, from what you're looking at right here, but gray granite is a very warm color and smoky slate is a cool color. So you want to use them, you can use them together, but in certain ways. And I will explain that um, concept on my video tomorrow that's on my YouTube channel. So you can get to my YouTube channel by going to YouTube and search Jenny Hall Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and find my channel. And I produce three to four videos per week of video tutorials. So um, if you have any questions, you can contact me. My email address is jennystampsup at gmail.com. If you have any interest in becoming a Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and adding something that you've seen today to your starter kit, then I would love to have you on my team. My team is called We Create, and we are a fun, wonderful bunch of stampers that have created our own loving community that we support each other, and you will have a wonderful place to fit into. All of these products that are not available yet are gonna be available on June the 1st in the new Stampin' Up! catalog, including Pick a Pennant, 
the Simple Chamois, and this is what the catalog looks like. And if you are on my mailing list, you'll be getting one of these wonderful little color revamp guides. So you'll look for all the goodies with your catalog. If you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like to um, work with me, then drop me an email or send a comment right here on this video and I'll be in contact with you in order to get your information and send one out. Um, I would love to be able to work with you as a demonstrator and spoil you and send you lots of goodies and have a really great time together. If you're one of my customers and you haven't yet joined my Facebook VIP group, reach out to me and let me know that you'd like to join the Facebook VIP group. It's exclusively just for customers. It is not for customers of other demonstrators, so you will be able to get all of the information. Every month on the 15th, I have a brand new 12 pack tutorial that is free to any purchase from my Stampin' Up! online store. And the new one is just come out. So every month there's a brand new 12 pack tutorial and you can get to my Stampin' Up! shop by clicking shop now here on Facebook or you can go over to my blog at jennystampsup.com and click shop now. And once you make your purchase, then I'll send you the 12 pack PDF by email. And there's loads and loads of projects there. And they're not just regular, very five second cards. These are wonderful card designs from top demonstrators all around the world. And um, we have come together to help each other and share these special rewards with our customers. So um, the new 12 pack is available since today is the 16th, then you can get it. Thank you all so much for joining me today for Animal Outing and Pick a Pennant. And these wonderful cards that are from Animal Outing are for your inspiration. I hope that you have enjoyed the demonstration and the happy mail. And if you have any questions about Color Club, then feel free to contact me or go over to my blog and just click on the Color Club. And make sure you don't put your credit card information on the form. I will contact you to get the credit card information so I can keep your info secure. Thanks again for joining me. Oh, thanks, Nicola. I'm so happy you were able to stop in. Um, I will see you guys next Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Have a great day. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day.